Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. I know it's been almost actually over a month now since I last posted, so I apologize for that. But uh, just recently, what's been going on? Just had to replace some brakes on Lance's car and a uh, bunch of other stuff happening at work. So, uh, a couple car shows I went to. I went to the Good Guys car show in Columbus. Now, this was a really cool event. They had the Speedway Motors trailer there as well as Summit, and they were racing at the autocar autocross track. So, uh, anything from autocross to all these really expensive high dollar builds to just your average everyday car to something completely custom so just kind of all kind of different cars and stuff if you've never been to a good guys event definitely recommend it like i said this was my first time here so my original plan was to actually bring the camaro down but unfortunately that did not pan out because the engine is still not done at the machine shop so got to get on them about getting that back new goal is just to finish it by the end of the summer because I'm pretty much just waiting on that sort of stuff right now and then um, I'm able to move forward but yeah there's thousands of cars here and one of my friends actually won an award there which was the one with the Biscayne uh, with the wheels that I had painted in the past he actually won for the hottest hot rod I believe it was called so that's pretty cool he had to stay till Sunday we were there Friday and Saturday and ended up leaving on Sunday morning yeah. because the weather was kind of cruddy so uh, but other than that yeah let's get started on back on the Camaro what I have accomplished right now so as I mentioned this is what I was waiting for all along was this firewall pad here and uh, since I finally have it now everything can go on over top of it because this goes on first so I, I had to wait for this to get everything installed interior wise meaning the heater box and then the dash will go over top of everything like this and the pedal assembly two bolts over that so that's what took a while this was back ordered on one website canceled it and then ended up getting it on ebay from someone called the parts place so it's supposed to be uh concourse correct apparently so looks good um a couple other things I have a few thank yous in order uh the first one i want to thank uh, shad username he mentioned about this um blowout clips so I didn't realize mine didn't have these. Apparently they go right around this area here and they keep the window from pulling out at speeds. So I'm gonna have to pull this weather stripping off, unfortunately, and then rivet these on and probably take the, um, whatever shielding is underneath there that holds those on apart for the rails. So the drip rails or whatever you wanna call them. So that's thank you number one, appreciate that because I would have never knew that. Thank you number two. Uh, I think Ralph Norton was the username on this one. He mentioned about the oil pressure line that was an aftermarket gauge that um, one of the owners installed previously. Everything was working good, but um, what I have on here now, which I never even crossed my mind about, about this sort of stuff, um, this plastic line or nylon or whatever it is, uh, this could definitely mess up an engine if this somehow burns or um, cracks and you'll have oil everywhere on the carpet and oil pressure loss. So thank you for him. I would have never thought of that either. So appreciate the comments, the helpful comments like that. It really does help me out. So I have this thing all set in place, rebuilt. Uh, everything's painted. Now I'm reusing this old rubber insulator just because I didn't like the new one that it came with. I just don't like the look of it. And this one actually wraps all the way around and down under here. So I just sanded this back painted it just a couple little spritz of flat black and were able to then install it and uh, this one's actually more expensive too so I saved like 20 some dollars for that and don't have to wait for it is the, even the best part because I'm sick of waiting for parts so I'm gonna put this in now and hopefully everything lines up correctly and then we'll be able to start putting in the dash and everything else now as I was putting this in I was just test fitting everything which I put the firewall pad and insulation pad and everything lined up perfectly but there's something that was still bugging me, and that was this cut that I did not really think twice of when I first painted it. And someone must have just replaced the heater box at one time or the heater core and just cut it with a wire wheel to try to get more clearance out of it. So I couldn't let that go. I had to fix that. I want to make this car perfect. I also took out the heater box cover, and that was all cut up too. So in a little bit here, I'll explain everything, but I decided to order a new one of those. And at that point, I might as well just do the hood right now too, underneath of it, before I put the interior back in. 
and that way everything's going to be able to match up that I want to match up correctly, meaning the same correct gloss level of the black. My dad's helping me out here prepped underneath the hood. I completely stripped it down to bare metal, so that took quite some time to do that. It'll look a lot nicer than just scuffing it down and then putting over a, a paint. Okay, got this all kind of smoothed over now, and I actually ended up getting a new one of these covers for the heater core, just because the other one, I still kind of smelled on the other side from the mice, and it's not in the greatest shape at the end here. So someone just cut into that probably and bent all this stuff up. Probably just to get the old heater box out at one point, or heater core out, just to replace. But this one this fits really nice, and it was only $36, so time versus cost. Again, it's not worth it for me to mess with the other one and restore the other ones. This one fit pretty well. I forget, I think this is Eckler's brand, actually. I got it off of eBay because it was cheaper buying it through eBay, Eckler's, compared to online Eckler's. And uh, the only thing I have to do is drill out one little hole, just make this a little bit bigger on the bottom and then it'll fit perfectly. I'm gonna scuff that all down. I ended up just, I'm just gonna repaint this whole firewall. Uh, yeah, I know, I'm nuts, but uh, the reason being is I want this all the same black on the firewall and the same sheen of black on the underside of the hood. And I'm gonna make sure the fender wells, the inner fender wells are gonna be matching up with the same sheen as black too. Different temperatures and different ways you mix paint and everything can determine the gloss level. So I just am being picky, but I want to have the same gloss level as the firewall and as the under the hood, as well as in the inner fender wells. So that's gonna be happening all now. I'm gonna scuff the rest of this down here. I ended up smoothing this out a little bit more too. So it's gonna be really nice and smooth when it's done. And then this will be off. And I took this off again just because there was a line here before so i painted this while it was on the car which i was stupid to do back um, in the winter time i just didn't think i was going to take it off so i just left it on so now in the future this will be separate this will be separate if anyone wants to pull this off there won't be any cracking of the paint right at the seam here so job is done right so i ended up sanding the bare metal for the hood up to 220 and it's ready to uh, prime and then now after that, I also scotch brighted this with a red scuff pad and did the same with the firewall. So did the red scotch bright on that, sanded it down again, uh, clean, clean, clean with glass cleaner. You could either use that or rubbing alcohol is fine too, IPA. And that way you're ready to top coat. And I'm using SPI's black epoxy primer and I'm just trying to get the mixtures right. So I experimented a little bit with this before I sprayed, but basically what you do is you put two wet coats down like I'm doing here on the hood, let it sit for a while, and then depending on the gloss level that you want, you put one final coat down and it is just over-reduced. So basically if you just over-reduce something, you're just putting less paint on that item and that way that there's just not as much paint being hit on that hood so that's what decreases the gloss level and I'll explain everything of how I mix this later on during the video and at this point my dad was calling me to try to help him set his cab of his 52 Ford F1 back on the frame. He's been working on this forever, doing body work on it and everything. I've been helping him out with just putting in the whole floor, completely replaced that floor. And so there's a lot of different things that it's kind of hard to line stuff up, especially with these old trucks trying to get the gaps right. He's been struggling with the doors, which I think he finally got correct now to match up the lines because just they just never fit correct from the factory and of course by the time I got here he already had this most of the way on the frame I uh, just didn't want to wait I guess for me you know how that goes but I helped him line up the rest of the holes here and had a second set of eyes watching just to see what was hitting on everything now what the issue was on this the floors that were made they had pinch welds and had this little kind of area that came down and was hitting the frame that they should have cut out from the factory. So what we're going to do now is cut out that section 
and then the cab will be able to sit flush on the frame. Now by the time I got home and everything, I just it was just too late and I was just too tired, wasn't in the right mindset to paint that final coat. So what I did was go to work a couple days, came back a couple days later, and then ended up just off camera painting this firewall and the underhood. I just really wanted to focus on getting this right because it's it's actually really tricky. It's a hard hard color to do with just the SPI primer but it's worth it because of the, the durability when you're done with it. So I ended up getting what I think is the perfect sheen on this hood and the firewall, finally, as well as this cover here. I put some foam on this to seal it rather than silicone or whatever you would normally use, and that way it's, it's going to be able to be easily removed on and off, even though I probably will never have to do that again in the near future. Put everything back together. Now I had this weather stripping sitting around forever, but it's kind of annoying because I wanted to use those factory clips and they didn't have a spot for the hole to actually go through it. So what I did was just make my own and then just heat it up with a screwdriver and then just poked a hole and then just cinched them, cinched them down like that. So I don't know if I would, I forget where I, I think Camaro Centro I ordered this from. Definitely not like an original looking piece because it actually has a slit in it and then that hides those clips with the holes already done but whatever this will work fine and then when you lift up the hood um, they're hidden in the back so you can't really see them but just kinda more work than, than needed it should have been a five minute job it turned into probably twenty thirty minutes at least just to poke all those holes in there and push them all in I think I finally got this sheen that I wanted. I didn't film too much just because I just wanted to sit down and knock it out and really focus on not doing this a third time. So what I did, just to recap, I had sanded everything down. I uh, put two coats of epoxy primer, the black from SBI, and you're able to not top coat that because it has the proper UV additives in there that protect everything. I did that, uh, just mixed it one-to-one -one with the uh, activator and then the paint, and then just laid that on two coats, waited three to four days because you could recoat it within five days without scuffing. I come, came back after work one day, uh, and then I reduced it. You have to only do one coat. This is, it's kind of tricky to, to do this, but you do one coat, and it's a medium coat. I re ended up reducing to get the sheen that I wanted the right gloss level. I mixed it one to one to one, meaning one part activator, one part paint, and then one part of reducer. So all equal parts. And then that way I just put one even coat down on the hood and the firewall. I knew those matched now because I did it at the same time, same temperature, same spray pattern, and same um, PSI at the gun, which was 25. So now it finally matches. The inner fender wells match up perfectly too. Finally got it all done. I am definitely happy with this now and I can finally go back to the interior. I just didn't want to have all these openings and stuff and have the interior all set in there and then have overspray on various bolts coming through that are protruding through the firewall or grommets. So that's why I wanted to do that first. So now I, everything is really nice sheen and you can take it apart without worrying about anything peeling up and is done correctly now, 100%.